As a kid, you know, you say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you say, oh, I'm going to be a race car driver. And I used to say that, and I never actually believed it. For me, I think I followed a similar path to many drivers. I started in go-karts. I, you know, I competed in karting for seven years. You know, I could compete, I could win races. And because of that, it, it really allowed me to excel and, and learn a lot about driving. For car racing, one thing that's, that's very important is just your, your overall fitness. And for myself, I spend quite a lot of time cycling, but uh, I'm also lucky enough to have a playground in my backyard where in the winter I can go skiing. So definitely skiing is a big part of my life, always has been. And uh, luckily it's a, you know, a little bit of a physical activity that I can use to uh, train for the season. Started skiing here when I was two years old and I've had a season's pass every year. You know, actually one thing that's really funny about, about skiing and, and car racing is that every time you get ski racers in a car, 99% of the time they're good. And a lot of things that go hand in hand, obviously the speed is, is the simple one, the one that you can easily understand. You can't have that fear. But the other thing that really impacts it is your vision, your eyes. Skiing and car racing, at the end of the day, you're gonna go where your eyes are. And it's about visualizing your line on the racetrack or on the ski hill. And that's one thing that really translates between the two sports. I think a lot of different people have a different level of inherent competitiveness. I hate losing at Monopoly. <laughs> I think, you know, I hate losing at everything. Um, I'm a competitive person by nature. Everything I do, I, I want to do well. In those cases is usually when I, you know, the best comes out of me. And so competing, you know, in a way as a, as a living is, says a lot about me and, and I don't think I'd have it any other way. <laughs> Our driver lineup this year is very exciting. Got uh, Lawrence Van Thur and Zachary Robichon running the full season together. Who doesn't want to be a Porsche driver somehow? Porsche is a brand which has been on motorsports forever uh, and probably will be. Cars, they have motorsport DNA in them from beginning to the end. My granddad used to race a little bit. My father used to race. My mom, she grew up next to the track. So it was a bit of a family thing. I think I always enjoyed the, the kick of, of racing, the adrenaline, and and the fact of trying to beat others, to be to be the best at it. And I've, in the end, I've been doing this since I was I'm 12. You know, so you could almost say I don't know anything anything else. The IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship is second to none in North America. I'd say it's you know among the elite sports car racing championships in the world. The racing is incredible when you have, you know, multi-class racing as we call it. You know, having cars at different speeds and, you know, quite frankly, cars that make lap times in different ways on track at the same time is extremely challenging for the drivers and extremely excited. You know, as uh, some commentators say, you know, traffic giveth, traffic taketh away, if you will. So, uh, you know, opportunities come from it and also risks come from it as well. One of the biggest things we learn is really to, to play the long game. I feel we've done a great job of you know winning races in the past obviously we've won two races in our debut season in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship so that was great. Obviously winning is, is what we're out there to try to do if we can um, but we're thinking big picture and doing what we can to secure as many points as possible. I mean certainly if the car gets racked um, or something that takes a lot of time and man hours that's obviously not enjoyable but we're all here we're willing to do what we have to do to ensure we're competitive week in and week out whatever it takes. The goal for 2021 is simple, is to win a championship. That's what our, our intent is. I feel our driver lineup and our crew that we have in place is capable of that. And I couldn't be more excited for the year to get started. The Rolex 
24 starts the season is an iconic race, but a lot of it has to do with Daytona International Speedway, a track unlike any other we go to. What's interesting about the IMSA WeatherTech Championship is that the biggest race of the year is the first race, and in, in a way, the first race is the championship in itself. Well, when it comes to laying on the facilities for the fans, no one does it better than Daytona International Speedway. I mean, Daytona is our Super Bowl. It's our biggest race of the year. It's the one we all want to win. Lawrence Van Thur and Zachary Robichon will be joined for the long endurance races by Lars Kern and Australian Matt Campbell. This race is, is steeped in history and uh, you know I've been competing in this race this is my third time in a row and uh, you know it's a really crazy race you know obviously the ends are, are so close you know with the cautions and everything like that uh, always close racing and uh, very exciting. I think it's a race everybody wants to win. Um, Daytona 24 hours, uh, I think it's a lot is about the watch. Um, there are not that, that many races in the world where, where you can win something that nice. So I think every driver likes to come here and uh, fight for this watch. I haven't worn a watch since 2014, since I started this role, because my goal is to win one. So we're, uh, that's the one we all want to win and we're going to do our best to make that happen. Welcome to the start of the 2021 the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship first round. It's one of the very big ones. the rest of the year without the endurance races, you're only doing about 30 hours of racing for, for an entire season. So in one race to get 24 hours out of the way, it really is a championship in and all itself. You know, there's a lot of people competing in this race that this is their only race of the year and they don't care about the championship standing. Some of those cars that are taking extra risks, they're not planning on being at the next race. So all they want to do is win this one. I imagine that just still running near the end of the race carries you, it gives you what you need to just get through this last few hours. And I mean, like, uh, that's what you're working towards. That's what you're trying to stay up for. All sorts of stuff happened. We got damage on the car. We got hit from behind and we had an incident pit lane. It seemed as though everything that could go wrong was going wrong and we were just kind of crawling back from everything that had happened. And uh, I got back in the car on new tires. I was really trying to get some heat into the tires and uh, I just kind of overdid it into one of the corners and got under the marbles. So that just slid the car up and, and we just, just tagged the wall. Um, and unfortunately broke the drive shaft. 100% on me that one. And uh, you know, that was probably the worst moment of my life. You know, you gotta rally around each other to bring each other up. Just put that behind you and, and keep trucking forward, you know? Like, that's all you can do. And you can't do that alone. You gotta have the support, because if you feel like you're alone there, then, you know, you're just gonna continue to make mistakes, and ultimately that's gonna cost you. Sebring, I think that's the one race that I had earmarked as like probably for me personally the most important race I could I could win. My whole life, my dad was a huge influence in my uh, my love of automotive and, and motorsport. Back when I was in undergraduate university, I couldn't figure out a particular type of program. You know, frustrated to the point of tears. And it was uh, during the 12 hours of Sebring, and uh, we looked at the TV or he looked at the TV and reassured me that you know we'd figure it out, I'd graduate, and that I would win that race one day. I mean, it's my favorite track. Just the challenge from a technical standpoint is, is second to none. The bumps, I mean, like they say, respect the bumps. The surface of the track is very rough. It's got a lot of concrete areas in the, on the track that's very uneven surfaces. Kind of a love-hate relationship with this track because if the car is good, you feel well, everything goes really good. 
If it's the other way around, everything is double as horrible because if all the bumps would throw you around. It's a rough place, but in the end, you know, it's the same for everybody. It's a 12-hour it's a race. It's, it's, it's a tough race uh, for us drivers. It's, it's not like Daytona where you have like a gentle approach on the race. Here it's like you go flat out right from the start. In these endurance races, we've, we've had some tough luck, so it's about redemption as well. Huge crowd on hand here today. Wonderful circuit with 17 corners here in Central Florida that has a rich motorsport heritage. makes the pass down the inside, so we had three wide at one stage. Jimmy trying to go around the pair of those fighting GT Daytona cars. And here, even after four or five laps, you already feel bruises forming um, from your, your body being thrown around, so it's definitely a, a different challenge, but at the same time, it's, it's a lot of fun because the driver can make a big difference. Bumps have the ability to shoot cars literally off the track. Like the coming up that Daytona, we were really strong and we, we brought that over to Sebring. The mistakes we made in Daytona, we didn't do in Sebring, so we learned very quickly and, and then we got the result which we deserved. That means that two Porsches, first and second, it's Faf Motorsports. Uh, it's unbelievable to win Sebring, 12 hour, one of the biggest races, one, biggest sports car races in the world. I mean, the team deserves exactly that. They were working so hard. Last year we didn't race much um, and it's just, I think, yeah, everybody did his perfect job. We saved the best guy for the end and Larry just finished the job. I mean, it, it means a lot. We managed to get a good car over to Sebring here and, and did a perfect race. I mean, we did no mistakes. Reggie was spot on. The car was really quick. Uh, everything, everything went perfect. So I'm, I'm really happy for, for Lars and Zach and, and, and all, everybody at Puff. So, I mean, we just, you know, we just won the race. It's kind of unbelievable. We knew from the beginning we had a strong car, and, but in a 12-hour race, you literally have no idea what's going to happen. Everybody just did a phenomenal job. Like the, the crew was like clockwork on the pit stops, the strongest pit stops, and Lars and Larry, they both didn't put a wheel wrong, and none of us did, and I think, you know, this was really a team effort, and I couldn't be happier, honestly. All those memories and, and those feelings came flooding back. I mean, it was, it was something that would mean a lot to me and something I had earmarked for myself. My father was diagnosed with brain cancer, glioblastoma. I mean, I was deathly afraid that we'd be traveling our way to race and I'd get a phone call that something had happened. Um, and he, time and time again, assured me, he was like, don't you dare let the team down. You know, we've worked too hard for this. You need to be there. Uh, Steve was nice enough to let me bring the trophy to him in the hospital um, and this was a few weeks to a month um, before he passed away and um, the brain cancer was slowly inhibiting his muscle function um, so he's slowly becoming paralyzed as a result of it and um, picked up the trophy with his one good remaining hand and uh, he looked at me and said you guys are going to win the championship this year. Sebring couldn't come soon enough. You know, at Daytona everything was going fine until I made that mistake, but it was about reminding myself that that was just that. It was just a mistake. It wasn't foreshadowing of, of things to come. You know, nobody can take that away from us at this point. I think we, we showed our maturity as a team. You know, we've won lots of short races, we've, but we've never been able to put it together on the high pressure situations. And I think we, we really made a statement with it.
We start the year with our longest and second longest races of the season, but now we get into the kind of the bulk of our season, which is the two hour and 40 minute sprint races. You know, Mid-Ohio is a very technical track, I'd say. Um, it's got a, a lot of flowing corners and a lot of elevation change, but you're kind of constantly rolling up and down. So the car is always sort of dancing, so to speak. I personally like to go to, to the Bravery tracks. Like, that's why I love racing in America. Uh, tracks are old school, you know, like here in Mid-Ohio. Uh, you have a track, a grass or a gravel on a wall, and if you make a mistake, you know, you get punished for it. Uh, that's, in my opinion, kind of the way uh, it needs to be. Yeah, I think Larry's been here twice before, and I think he's won both times. So, you know, he, uh, no pressure on my side, because clearly his other teammates were able to help him out, right? They've come twice here, and I won twice. <laughs> so I hope, uh, hope we can keep that up. It's a very warm welcome to a very pleasant Mid-Ohio sports car course. It's, it's still a two and a half hour race, so a lot can happen. We'll have to be smart on strategy, good guys for that. There's less room for creativity than you do in a, in a long endurance race. So for sure, um, you know, maybe patience was the name of the game the first two races, and then now maybe a little bit more sense of urgency when we're on track. An opportunist maneuver down the inside by Lawrence Van Tour turns another Porsche factory driver around, and this is a full course caution. Now, who's this going to benefit? Well, everybody except the, the leaders, basically, <laughs> in each of the classes, uh, because whatever advantage they had has now been completely and that erased. Was... Zach did such an amazing job. Uh, you know, he was saving fuel. Uh, he got by like, two or three cars on the opening lap and then kind of picked them off one by one from there, which was awesome. Uh, didn't really know what to expect, but I kind of figured, hey, I'm last anyway, so I might as well try something. And I think I passed three guys. Um, kind of had put myself a little bit of a goal that we'd move up four spots in the first five laps. I just didn't think it would take one lap. <laughs> Without that yellow, uh, definitely would have I think been P4. Um, the yellow was untimely, obviously we were part of it, which was unfortunate. We don't want this stuff to happen and I had no intent to pass them, but they were fighting so much and they all kind of pushed each other in a corner and then and I just went on, on the inside, you know, taking advantage of that and, and they all came back. Um, unfortunately, they probably didn't know I was there and I feel sorry for them, it's not supposed to happen, it was not my intent. but. I spoke with him, it's, it's one of those things in racing, in those moments. It's just the speed of Watkins Glen. I mean, so, uh, so many people love this track for, for its high speed nature and just commitment. And yeah, six hours around this place and the, the stress and the abuse on the parts is, is its own challenge because of just the, the raw, G loads you're putting through the chassis at all times. Fire to the left rear, Grasser racing Lamborghini in the pit lane entrance. We just weren't super happy with the car. I think none of the drivers were really felt comfortable. And then we had like freak issues at the pit stop. Sitting for now 55 seconds. Too long. They're trying to get the window net to latch. The driver's net won't secure. Now it goes. Johnny Knott gives the thumbs up and Lawrence Vantor roars away. But that was at least 18 seconds too long of a pit stop. You know, there's 20 seconds gone that you, know, you gotta work. 10 hours to get back sometimes. So it was just kind of one of those races where everything went the wrong way. And 
but it just was, you know, one of those weekends where you kind of just felt very mediocre. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the picturesque surroundings of Broad America for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. The cameras and we saw the car was stopped uh, you know, on the run down turn five. So we weren't sure he was going to get moving and then you know, time came where we had to make the call and did a great job of discussing the pros and cons of, of that and we made the call to pit. We got in before the yellow so we were able to be in a favorable position. In GT Daytona, it's another Porsche victory. Faf Motorsport with the number nine car. <laughs> Zach Robichon had the drive of his life, if I'm honest, and he was just passing cars left, right, center, around the outside. It was so much fun to watch, and he handed Larry the car with a 10-second lead. And it's kind of one of those where it's it's now or never, and, and, and hope for the best, and luckily it worked out. We did uh, great. Zach honestly did all the work uh, this, this race. Uh, he gave it to me on the Golden Plateau, so. At Laguna, we made the conscious decision to set the car up quite oversteery, which is when the back of the car slides a lot. What happened during my qualifying is that we were basically track sweepers after that. You know, we were, we ended up sixth, which I was not happy about. And I really wasn't happy with the car. And this circuit's just under two and a quarter miles around with 11 corners, the Andretti hairpin, the rear hull straight. Iconic places and good places to make uh, passes as well. There's a little bit of everything here. On track, so a disaster starts for well, that car. So if you can see maybe what happened. Whoa. Uh, oh, big hit in the Lamborghini. Zachary Robichon Faf in the Plaid Porsche in fourth position. I kind of got stuck in the line with the top four, but as soon as I would fall back, I could catch up, but I was struggling with our tire pressures and our tire temps. So I wasn't able to make a move. Comes the number nine, a fast motorsport portion. And then, uh, yeah, Larry did what Larry does, and and the fueling still going on. Now the probe comes out. And you know, he sort of took advantage of the other cars when their tires started falling off because uh, you know we really were set up for that long run, and he was able to yeah make some moves that I don't know how he did it. I think yeah I don't know if he had a point to prove. Or, I don't know what he ate for breakfast that day. We're in a good roll. The car was was very good. Uh, we had a very good long race uh, pace and could manage our tires. Yeah, we feel confident and, and, and I think so the sec and that's that's quite important. But it was uh, it was good and yeah, we, he ended up going from fourth to first. GT Daytona, Faf Porsche wins. Now, Faf will come up with their third win of the season, second in a row. So, n next year, the plan is uh, for, for Faf to run in GTD Pro, which I think, you know, they, they've done everything right to, to take that next step. You know, for, for me, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of not great. Uh, you know, they, they're going to get lots of support from, from Porsche Motorsports and, and whoever their partners are to get some of the best drivers in the world in the car. And uh, yeah, it won't, it won't be with me. So looking at what we've done the last three years, I can't be disappointed that, that we're not going to be together next year. 
all I can do is say, hey, this is the this is the end of the road, you know, with me with the team. Uh, it's pretty tough. Um, his first year in IMSA and my first year in IMSA were the same. And then you watch him evolve and develop as a race car driver himself. And then now he's got to go. It, it sucks, to be honest. Um, he's a really good guy, great driver, um, great attitude. You know, our move to GTD Pro, I think it's something that we want to do. It's the next step in our progression as a team. Um, you know, Zach's been a huge part of what's got us here and you know, kind of been that rock that's held our team together. Um, but, you know, time goes on, he's a smart guy, he's going to land on his feet. And, uh, uh, we want to make sure that we send him off with the championship that he's helped us potentially earn. So. I've never left a championship without winning one, and I don't plan on starting that now. So, you know, let's go out with Bang. Westfall down the inside, tried to do two Porsches in one go. Vanto gave him room, but he did nail the back of Patrick Long. Side by side again for the two Porsches, and it's a change of position. Great run by Lawrence Vanto. Vanto and Patrick Long, two Porsche Works drivers. They know each other very well. They know these cars very well, Jeremy. What a great maneuver! A little love tap in the hairpin from Long onto the back of the plaid Porsche, but Vanto got a great run. What I need to remind myself, which was like, hey, you got here for a reason. So just keep doing what you have done and wh who you are. Get your head in the game, do what you have to do, is when I'm at my best. Unfortunately, we had a, a little, let's say, mistake in qualifying where we got disqualified. Larry got in the car and then he gets a new set of tires. Once the tires go on the car, no one can touch the car. We were in the process of setting the pressures. So my pressures in the rear were set. I went and put them on the car. Front ones were not. I misheard. I thought they were set. So I put the tires on the car. And Anthony just, you know, he's only been back for three or four races. He went over and started adjusting it because he had not done it yet. He went to the car to go set the pressures in the front and done. That killed it. Penalty infraction for touching the car, uh, which disqualified our qualifying position with Zach. So that sent us to the back of the pack. You know, you're starting almost last. Wow, this is a big mountain to climb. dragging each other by all very tight on the back straight but a little bit of bump drafting from the right motorsport car on the fast what it, what it shows John is the straight line speed of the Porsche absolutely right <laughs> yeah absolutely right wasn't going as quick as I thought but he just once he was on the grass lost that going into the roller coaster in comes the FAF number nine car from the lead. Left side tires they're doing, right side tires, four tires stop. Wow, they're putting a lot of fuel into this car for Larry. 14, 15, 16, 17 seconds. I love a track that's kind of in between conditions. A little bit of wet, a little bit of dry, maybe one dry line. So I kind of took that to my advantage. A little bit back. Oh, he hit the curve. Yep. 
hit the inside curb. Garcia hit the inside curb, came from a long way. We're championship leaders, but you're, you don't win a championship without beating adversity. And here we were in a position where we we're starting at the back. And I think we, we really showed what a true championship team is made of. Vanto chased to the line by Brian Sellis in what but from 13th after not having a qualifying time to the win for the number nine Fab Porsche in GTD. P1 was just crazy, amazing. Never expected to go that far from last to first during a two hour and 40 minute race. Trying to do the impossible, even though everyone believed deep down that we could do it. Even in our strategy meeting, that was the main point was anything can happen. And lo and behold, it did. So that shows the strength of the team. You know, we all made mistakes, but we bounced back even stronger. And uh, that, was, that was a perfect example. We're at Road Atlanta, uh, last race of the year, the Motul Petit Le Mans. Uh, for many reasons, you know, it's one of the best races of the year, uh, craziest races of the year as well. This is the, the final round of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. So, the championship will be decided today. We're currently leading by, you know, a very small margin over the Paul Miller Racing Lamborghinis. So, it's going to be a fight all the way to the end. They're, they're a great group. They're one of the best teams in this paddock, and we you know, have always measured ourselves against them, and today's no different. So we'll have a uh, real winner-take-all uh, action today. It's an exciting weekend. I think everybody is, is looking forward to it, but also obviously a bit a bit more nervous or stressed than usual, because uh, you can't win a championship like this every day. So uh, quite uh, an exciting weekend ahead. And, uh, you know, to be honest, we're coming in here in this 10-hour race leading the championship. So it's, uh, it's a big undertaking for us lots of unknown going into it. Well, you know, Lars and Zach have been with us since day one in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. I think we want to send them off for the championship. As you know, like none of the three drivers are returning next year. So, you know, Larry's been a great addition. He's become family since day one. Um, he's, he pushes us to be better and I think we needed that. So it's, uh, yeah, we want that for them as much as the team. We're just enjoying the time we have together. Um, yeah, for Larry, Zach and myself, it's going to be the last race with Faf Motorsports. That's pretty clear for, for the three of us. Yeah, we just enjoy the time. I, I feel that a lot of questions this weekend about, you know, what's the future hold? And, you know, there's, there's an opportunity ahead of us that, ahead of myself, that, to be honest, I, five years ago, if you told me I was in this position, I, I never would have believed it. So. You know, the focus this weekend is, is about this weekend and this championship and, and, you know, finishing off these three years with FAF as, as best as possible. Well, you know, there's a lot at stake and it's, uh, but we're, we're, you know, I think you got to take it one race at a time, no matter where you're sitting here. So it's, uh, let's do the best we can this weekend and uh, the cards will land where they do. I mean, the, the general strategy going into a race like this is just to survive uh, until like the last three, four hours. We saw it in practice already. We had lots of red flags and issues going on on track and it's going to be really, really cool. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to see quite a lot of incidents on track. One thing we haven't done, we've won major endurance races. The one thing we haven't won yet is, is win the championship. And you know, I, I want to win it, but I want to win it as a team. That's the Faf car into the pit lane, inherited the lead in that uh, pit stop, although did make the pass. That sounded that's, absolutely That's called fantastic. leaving a pit lane. And it's, oh, and this is championship Ooh, implications. Wow. Championship implications, right front damage to the number one Lamborghini, the Paul Miller Racing Car. Uh, and that is huge for the championship. Yeah, this is it. I mean, just bring the car within these last four hours. 
it, it comes down to Larry. I will have to do everything for that. You just have to do your thing. You know, you plan for the future. You look at what you've done. You look at what you've accomplished, and you know you want to you want to end everything on a high note with these guys. So that that just motivates us all a little bit more. And I know, you know, Lawrence and Lars, they feel the same. Watching the car cross the finish line, every single person on the team came by and told me that it was for my dad. If that was a catalyst for the team and if something they rallied behind for me and for him, I mean, I'll, I'll forever be in their debt. I think we, we worked really well together. We helped each other grow. And, and get better during the year. You really see it more in the inner workings of a team, that it's such a team sport. You know, people just see a driver and a car out there, there's so much behind it. And these guys have hit it this year, they've done a great job. It's easy to say it now, because you're living it, but this has absolutely been, you know, some of the best times I've ever spent, um, and hands down the most fun I've ever had in a race team. It's that atmosphere within the team, I think, you know, that's something that I'll likely never have again, and, and I'll for sure cherish for the rest of my life and you know, I can't wait to see what future holds for myself and, and for them as well.